Spirit 105.3, is this Jordan Felice? This is. Is this Erica? It's Erica and Steve, and we're so excited you're here. Let's go. (laughs) Yes, let's go. In fact, speaking of let's go, you're known for bringing lots of energy. You've got a concert coming. Tell us what is in store for us. (laughs) Man, you're in store for getting all your hats knocked off. And, (laughs) And also, just some spiritual revival, man. Let's go. Yes. Uh, We can't wait. Okay, Jordan, your song, Jesus is Coming Back, it just fills us with joy, with happiness. How can we celebrate that in this world which has gotten super complicated? Yeah, you know, man, I would say this. I would say the number one way in which mentally we can really choose that celebration is the fact that we're really just singing about the promise that we have eternity waiting for us. You know, like, this is not our forever home. You know, this is just an airport. This is not our final destination. Yes! And, man, like, we can choose to celebrate, and we can choose to literally just live with full abandon, knowing that God has us, that He's for us, and that He will always provide for us when we need it. And we're living in crazy times, but honestly, more than ever, it's the time to lean in and trust the God of the universe right now. Mm. Yeah, wow. So on to something a little less significant, but still important. You know, coffee is a big deal to the Pacific Northwest, and we need to need to make sure that you clear uh, the the standards here. Uh, Got to ask you okay. about decaf and pumpkin spice latte. Okay. You recently shared that, like, decaf is just not a reality. Like, why is there even such a thing? Yeah, you know, I do wonder why, you know, <laughs> and mainly because... I drink coffee for survival. I don't know about you guys. (laughs) There's only a couple things in my life that I know that I need. Um, And it's a a relationship with Jesus, a a happy wife, happy children, and coffee. And I think that's pretty much it in the morning. Or else your boy doesn't have a happy wife, you know, and he doesn't have happy kids. And who knows? I mean, he would still have a relationship with Jesus. It might just be a little bit more traumatic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. What about the PSL? Are you a fan of the pumpkin spice latte? Who can't, who can hate on that? You know what I mean? Like who, who can hate on the PSL? Like, I mean, it's definitely not coffee, but (laughs) it's, but it's something to drink. That's really good. You know, (laughs) he puts it so well, Steve. (laughs) That was sort of diplomatic. (laughs) Very good. (laughs) Yeah. I'm running for president in like five years. So, Oh, okay. (laughs) Unfortunately, that won't be an election year, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that was the point. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> hey, Jordan, can we go a little deep here? Because you recently shared something on Facebook. I actually screenshot it. I was like, whoa. You were talking about the verse in the Bible that talks about consider it pure joy when you go through hard stuff. That's my paraphrase. Would you talk about that? Because it really, wow, it was like, yes, he's right about this. Yeah, so a lot of the reason why I always almost like start to get excited whenever I start going through something that's a little like treacherous in life is because I know that it's just the enemy trying to hold me back from something. And like, I feel like oftentimes it's a time of discouragement for a lot of people because we're just seeing all the things that we're up against. We're seeing this huge wall in front of us. And oftentimes, like, uh, whenever I'm talking about this uh, with a lot of my friends and stuff that are going through similar, whether they're going through, like, a mental thing or a physical thing or whatever it is, I'm like, man, like, oftentimes we're looking only in one direction. And I find that the turmoils in this life are 2D. You know what I mean? And God's economy is in, like, 10D. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) you can see from every... And so we're only seeing what's like right in front of us. And it's mm-hmm. like, man, like if we could just look up or if we could just look to the right or the left, like this moment wouldn't be so scary because we would see the space around us and how free we are. It's just, we're just up against the wall and that's all we can see in that current moment. But like God wants us to see more. And I find that if we trust in him in those moments, he opens our eyes to be able to see like, man, like this is just a wall. And if I step five or six steps to the to the right, the wall isn't there anymore. But mm. oftentimes in our lives, we get so hyper-focused on something. It's usually like a goal that we've set on our own without praying about it, or, you know, mm. it's, it's a goal that we just have. 
locked in our mind. Like I need a new car or I need this or I need that. And I just keep running into roadblocks. It's like, man, like, why don't you just take two steps back and ask Jesus, Hey, Lord, like just come and guide my steps for a minute because I'm up against the wall and he'll kind of flip us around a couple of times. It's like, I feel like he's always like running me around a bat. You remember that game where yes. like you spin around a bat and you get all dizzy and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, I, I feel like he does that to me sometimes. And he's like, just walk. You know, mm. and so I'm like stumbling around like a crazy person, but somehow I get around it because he's like, stop walking in the same straight line. Like his economy doesn't work like the way that we think it does. And his mindset, his kingdom, like nothing works the way that we would ever perceive it to be. I'm really passionate about that because, man, like in those hard times, don't get don't get discouraged. Like that moment is the moment that you we lean into the Lord and we just become expectant of what he's going to do. Boom. Wow. Speaking of hard times, you had a bit of a health scare last year. How did that change your, your life and your perspective? Oh, gosh. Like, honestly, it's probably why I'm so passionate about what I just talked about, because, you know, for me, it was probably the scariest moment of my entire life. Just because it was a fluke thing. Basically, I got really sick before I was supposed to go play in Colorado at Red Rock. And I went to my doctor and they they gave me an IV and they put a steroid in it. And usually that's what I would do if I get sick because, you know, you have to sing and they're trying to kick it really fast. Sure. And so basically what happened is they ran out of the steroid that I usually would get. And so they gave me this other one called, it's called dextromethasone. And it, it thins your blood out like Oof. crazy to try to just get things rolling as fast as possible. But then the next morning I flew to high altitude. So I flew to like 8,600 feet or something. Oh. And so my body, like basically my brain started reacting like I was having altitude sickness, even though I wasn't. Whoa. So my brain and like everything was communicating to my body in a way that I was having altitude sickness, but my body was like, but we don't have altitude sickness. Why are you doing this kind of a thing? So I got stuck in this limbo of thinking I was dying because like my face went completely numb. My left arm went completely numb. So then I started thinking I was having a heart attack. And then I started thinking I was having a stroke and I just went into a full blown panic attack wow. like the roughest panic attack that i that i know of honestly because it stuck around for a whole week Ooh. Um, oh i couldn't shake it so i flew back home and i had to go directly into psychotherapy to try to get this crazy thing to shut off and it, it's basically just a fight or flight mechanism it's basically like so you have your your neurocortex and your subcortex in your brain And when you're having a panic attack, your neurocortex shuts off. So all your rational thinking, everything just disappears. And your neurocortex, which it it fires your fight or flight. So it's just your body trying to be like, hey, we're going to get out of this. It's okay. But it's also sending all these signals to your body like something's wrong when nothing is wrong. So I just got really passionate about people realizing that they can take back their lives and that the power of giving our life, giving our family, giving our finances, giving everything away to Jesus. It's such a big hurdle for people to do, but man, like it changes everything for us. And for me, it changed everything because I had to give him my entire life. It was like, I'm either going to die or I'm going to give you this and you're going to help me fix it. And so like, it was such a big testimonial thing for me because it's like, man, it's it's either I'm literally going to stay in this space of panic for until it stops, or I'm going to really commit to the fact that I need to just say, Lord, if it's my, it, like, honestly, I mean, it, it makes me want to cry, but it, 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 there was one night I literally said, if it's, if it's my time to go, then take me now. Like, take me. Like, I have lived my life for you. My wife knows that. My kids know that. And they know exactly where I'm going to go. But, you know, it was almost like I had to give everything away to gain everything back. Oh, Jordan, what are you most grateful for after all of that? You know, I think the thing I'm the most grateful for is just a healthy family. Yeah. Um, I think people don't understand how heavy health issues are. You know, it opened my eyes to a lot of like, I've got friends that are going through stuff. One of my friends is going through like, you know, really mild 
symptoms with cancer and stuff. Mm. But I mean, that is a huge issue though. Yes. It still messes you up and he's going to be fine. But I've also got another buddy who's like, he's going through dialysis right now because his kidneys are shutting down, Mm. you know? And so that's like a really serious issue. So I'm just so grateful for the fact that I know that I believe in a God who wants all of it. He wants everything. And I'm also just grateful for a family that's, that's healthy And even when the health isn't there, we know who to turn to in those times of duress. Yes. Wow. We are so glad you're still here, encouraging everybody. Hey, Jordan, uh, school is about ready to start. Could you uh, give the kids going back to school a bit of a pep talk? What would you say to them if you were on the bus with them right now? (laughs) Dude, you know what's so funny is I literally just dropped my little girl off at school. It was her first day. And my little boy's first day was yesterday. So, um... You know, I I would just tell them exactly what I told my little girl, my little boy. Like, first of all, you are exactly who you are, and it's it's exactly who God made you to be. And go grow that. And (sighs) also be kind to everybody. Be good to everybody. Be Jesus to everybody. And just know that you're loved. You know, know that you're loved today. There are moments where I feel like my kids can get serious anxiety on like just leaving us. Yeah. And I just always want them to know that they're so loved and they're so cared about, even in the midst of feeling anxious and feeling like mommy and daddy aren't right there, but they're loved by everybody around them and they're safe, you know? And so if you're going off to school, man, you're loved, you're safe and go be exactly who God called you to be. Oh, it's beautiful. You said loved, but some would say beloved. We were just playing that song this morning. Uh-huh. If, yes. That song is like everything you need to hear. Oh, thank you. Well, we are so grateful for you, Jordan. And thank you for your valuable time and for sharing your heart with us. We just love you and can't wait to have you here in Bothell. Man, love you guys so much. And I can't wait to be in Bothell, too, to be at Eastside Church and just be able to just experience the joy of the Lord and build the kingdom together, man. Like, it's going to be such an amazing night. Thank you, Jordan. Appreciate your time. Jesus is coming back. Come on. And Jordan's coming to Bothell. Thank you.